Hello, and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today's project is going to be some light restoration on this Big Tex trailer that I've owned for, I don't know, maybe 14 years or so. Uh, I haven't used it much in the last seven years. It's kind of just sat around and been used maybe once or twice a year. Uh, but now that I have uh, an SUV here instead of a pickup truck, I think I'm going to be using this more and more often, especially for hauling firewood around and things like that that I used to use my truck for. So what I want to do is I want to give this thing a light coat of paint and then I'm going to put some sides on it to uh, block off the, the rails there so that if I put firewood or other loose material in, it won't fall out. What I'm going to do now is take the trailer on a quick road test. Um, I've checked out the tires. They look like they're in good condition. And I've also checked out the lights. All the lights are working. So I'm going to take it down the road and make sure that it's still riding smooth and not making any kind of noises or has any bearing problems or any of that sort of thing. And uh, if we don't need to take care of any mechanical issues, then we'll start working on the, the cosmetics. I just got back from taking a test ride and everything seemed to be in good working order. No unusual noises, went down the road straight and smooth, so no problems there. So what we're going to do now is power wash some of the green stuff that's growing on it. I don't know if that's moss or algae or, or whatever it is. We're going to power wash that off and get the thing ready for a quick coat of paint. Now that I've got this thing rinsed off, the next thing that I'm going to do is take off some of the rust spots. And you can see I've already started back here. Here's uh, an original one. And they're all over the top of this rail. I once used this trailer to do a small roofing job. And we parked this thing under the roof and threw the old shingles into it. So it got kind of nicked up on the top. But I thought it would be a good idea to just kind of grind these down real quick before I put any paint on there. I don't know if it's really going to make a difference one way or the other. So attempting to remove the rust on this thing may have been an exercise in futility more than it was helpful. I ended up switching over to a wire wheel. That paint stripper wheel I had just kept clogging up. And uh, pretty much just got the loose rust off. You can see there's still you know, some surface rust here and there on different places of the trailer. But this was about the best I could do with the wire wheel without t having this turn into a day-long project. So I think what I'll do is just leave it like this and paint it. I am going to coat this with rust converter anyway. So now I almost forgot that I wanted to add some more holes to the front and back uprights on this trailer. You can see here that I've got two holes in this upright and all of the middle inserts or middle uprights that are along the side of the trailer. But I don't have the holes in the front and back uprights. And the reason for that is that I had sides on this trailer once before that I had made with some scrap wood and for whatever reason I didn't need holes in these uprights to make those sides work. But those sides were made out of, of uh, already kind of dilapidated wood so they've long since found the trash heap. So I'm going to add the two holes to each of the front and back uprights here to accommodate the new sides that I'm working on now. So I'm not sure if it's visible here or not, but I've used this center punch to mark the location of each of the holes on each of the uprights that need them. I just measured the locations of the other holes on the other uprights and just matched those. Once I get these holes drilled into all the uprights, then I can continue on with the rest of the rust convert primering.
So now I'll just repeat that process for the other three uprights. So here's a look at the rust converter I decided to use. I've never used the Rust-Oleum brand before. I have used other brands on some automotive projects in the past and it seems to have worked pretty well. So I'm going to give this stuff a shot on the trailer here and uh, see what happens. I don't think it can hurt anything, that's for sure. So you may be able to see here that this coating went on black from the get-go. The stuff I've used in the past has gone on clear and then turned black as it worked on the rust. So I don't know, maybe this stuff isn't quite the same as the stuff I've used in the past. Either way, it's what I've got, so it's what I'm going to use. So now what I'll do is I'll work my way back from front to back here on the trailer and just cover the, the rusty areas with this stuff. I don't really need to paint the whole thing with it, and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens after it dries. Okay. So here's a look at the trailer. I ended up leaving it overnight. You can see everything's dried up. It doesn't look much different than when I first put it on. Uh, like I said, this stuff went on black as opposed to the stuff that I'm used to that goes on clear and turns black as it dries. One can wasn't quite enough to do all of the areas that I really wanted to do. So I'll probably touch up a few areas with just some plain old flat black primer that I have. Let that dry for a little while and then start doing the final coat on this. So I'm just about halfway done I think. And I used, uh, well, a little bit more than one can. I started back there in that corner. I didn't do the gate. I just started in the uprights and the, and the rail went back, did both the inner and outer portions of everything, including the fender. Up to the front, did the front and back portions of the rail and the uprights, and the whole entire hitch for the most part. So I've got the thing more or less painted at this point, and I've gone through two and a half cans of the glossy. I'm going to leave the last half a can to touch up any uh, thin spots or whatever once this dries. Right now, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it looks a little bit spotty in the camera, but I think that's just because it's, you know, partially drying in some spots and uh, not in others. I'm going to let this bake here in the July sun for a few hours. I'm going to go do something else, and then uh, I'll come back and take a look. So I'd let this dry for a couple hours, and it still looked a little bit blotchy on the rails. So I took that last half a can I had and did a second coat on the rails all the way around, and on the outer part of the fenders, just to make them look a little bit better. And uh, they look a little more consistent now, so I guess that's all it needed was a second coat. Probably a third coat would be even better. So this wasn't part of the original plan, but I ended up putting some waterproofing sealer on these boards. I've had this can just as long as I've had the trailer, and I happened to be walking through the cellar and it caught my eye, and I decided I'd use it up here since I really haven't had a need for it for any other projects. So uh, now that it's more or less empty, I can dispose of it, and that's one less thing on the shelf that I have to worry about. So we've let the deck boards dry for a couple hours, and now we're ready to start working on putting on the sides. You can see that I've got the board clamped to the uprights on the side of the trailer. I've got one here in the back of the trailer, and I've got one more clamp up here at the front of the trailer. So the idea here is now that we have the board clamped nice and tight to the trailer, I can just drill out the holes in the upright and then we should be able to put the bolts through and that'll hold everything in place. So we're just going to use a 5 16 drill bit and just drill this through the wood. In order to attach the boards to the sides of the trailer, I'm going to use these 5 16 inch by 1 and a half inch long carriage bolts. And on the other side, I'll use 5 16 washers and 5 16 by 18 thread pitch uh, nuts. Whoops, looks like we forgot to drill this one. You got it. Okay. And put the bolt through. Give it a good tap. I just got it scoot in there. Now tap, 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 tap. 
Good. That's about as far as you're going to get it. That one might be tricky because the bolt's not sticking out quite as much, but do the best you can. Looks like you got it. As much as I can do. Okay, let's do the next one. So now we can use the ratchet to tighten things up. The watch, the head of the bolt, and once it starts to go into the wood a little bit, that's tight enough. Okay. Oh, you got past the little light. A little more. All right, that's probably good right there. We don't want to tighten it too much. We'll split the wood. Okay. So I've got the second board clamped on and I started drilling the holes. And when I got to the one where the tail light is, you can see that the tail light's in the way of my drill bit. So I ended up marking this one. I'll have to unclamp the board, drill that hole separately, and then put everything back in place. So it's been a few days since I've been able to get out here to work on the trailer, uh, partially due to personal obligations and partially due to weather. But I finally found some time and I've got the front boards cut to length and now I just need to drill the holes and put the bolts in. So as you can see, I finally got the front boards on the trailer and bolted on, so those are all ready to go. I did have one issue though. Uh, this bottom board was cupped a little bit, so I wasn't able to get the washer on. I just didn't have enough threads protruding on that bolt, but I think this will be okay. I don't think I really even need the washers on here, to be honest with you. So for whatever reason, I thought that my trailer had grease fittings on the spindles so that I could grease the bearings with a traditional grease gun. But once I crawled under here and took a look, I realized that I don't have uh, grease fittings. So in order to grease the bearings on this, I'll have to pull the wheel and repack the bearings manually in the traditional manner. I think I had been looking at my buddy's trailer a couple of weeks ago and he has the grease fittings on his, so I just assumed mine did too, but I guess I don't. So I'm not going to grease the bearings today. I'll save that for another time and another video. But I do have a couple of other finishing touches that I'm going to do before I call this project complete. I know, the trailer looked a lot better with the hubcaps off of it, but I've got these old hubcaps laying around and I figured I'd put them to some use. This particular hubcap on this side came off of a 1977 Buick LeSabre that my dad had, and the Chevy Caprice hubcap on the other side came off of, uh, I guess, an earlier mid-90s Caprice. I'm not exactly sure because I found it on the side of the road about where my driveway is now, and uh, I've had it ever since. The last thing that I needed to do was get the 741 stickers here on the back of the tailgate. So now I think we can call this complete. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. Thanks for watching.